one of the most exciting parts of life is also one of the most challenging parts of life, and it's change. We know that we need change because everything changes. If something doesn't change, then it's not going to continue to live. Think about the idea of what we do about change. Sometimes we want to stop change from happening. We like things just the way they are. We don't want anything to change. And then we try to control change. Well, trying to control change is trying to control how your children grow up. They're just naturally going to grow up. And you have to find ways to continue to help them learn and also you to adjust to them. Change is hard. But you know what? It's supposed to be. Because life is hard. And if we don't ever change, we never are going to be able to handle life because life is changing all the time. As a church, we're going through a time of change. I'm going to be leaving here as pastor, and it's going to throw you and me into a whole different way of living that we're not used to. And some are going to panic. Some are going to pull back. Some may even leave. But then there'll be the wise ones who realize, wait a minute, this is just a part of the Christian life. Everything changes. So as long as you don't try to stop change and you don't try to control change, when you just go with change, then you see what it means to develop and grow as a person and also as a Christian. It's going to be a wilderness time. But the good thing about the wilderness time, it's also a time of discovery. You start asking yourself questions like, Who are we? Where are we going? What direction is the Lord leading next? How will we know when we're there? I know those are uncomfortable because I have felt them myself. In 2014, uh, 2013 to 2014, we lost three staff members here at church. Our secretary resigned. Our Minister of Education, Jason Lowe at the time, resigned. And then Matthew Bone left. I walked through about three tough years. I didn't say a whole lot about it because a lot of times it just sounds like I'm whining. <laughs> I didn't want to sound like a whiner. But it was three tough years. What I thought was going to happen didn't happen. Change came that I wasn't really expecting. I thought the change that we were going to have was going to be explosive growth. And what happened is we began to lose more and more people all the time. It's been a tough time. Looking back, probably a lot of pastors would have left. But the Lord didn't say that I could leave, so He made me stick it out. I'm glad He did. I'm glad He made me stick it out because I learned a lot through that. I learned a lot that change in the way I think it should be may not be the way it needs to go. Maybe the Lord's got an idea of change that I need to adjust to. But now I am. I am uh, adjusting to a change. I'm going to be leaving here as pastor. And the question is, why? Why am I doing it? Well, Tom Blumenberg, who makes beautiful woodwork like this, has given this to the church. And if you notice, he wrote something on there. It says, because the man on the middle cross said so. Now that goes back to a video I did a few months back where we're talking, you hear the guy talk about what the thief on the cross, he got a chance to go to paradise. And the only reason he had for going to paradise, going to heaven, because the man on the middle cross said he could go. When Jesus spoke to that thief, he was speaking to all of us. And what we need to get is this. Tom put it on, on that vase. Because the man on the middle cross said so. The reason I'm leaving and the only reason I'm leaving is that the Lord said so. In the same way He told me to come, He's now telling me to leave. Now what you're going to find out as you go through this as church members, all of you trying to adjust to this new reality, is that there's going to be some that are sad. You're going to wonder, why? What? Why did we do something? Listen, you guys didn't do anything. You didn't do anything to make me want to leave. The Lord said I'd done enough, and He told me when, and that's the reason why I'm going. There's nothing wrong with you. There's no re You're not the cause of me leaving. Then there's going to be the glad group. There's some people who maybe think I've stayed here too long. We won't go into names. 
but a lot of you have been happy for me, and that's that's helped me a lot because it's tough leaving. I'm not gonna lie to you, it's tough leaving, and you've been glad for me. You're glad that Debbie and I are gonna be able to spend more time together. That uh, retirement is really a good thing, and that's what we're doing is going to retirement. So that that's been helpful to me. I've explained it this way. Leaving you is like when you put your first child in college. Now, maybe not all of you have experienced that, but I can remember dropping off our children one at a time off to college. You get them in the room, you get them settled, then you got to walk off. And the emotions just flood. You think, oh goodness, did I tell them enough? Did I show them enough? Did I give them enough? Only to realize you did. I feel the same way about you. Did I show them enough? Did I tell them enough? Did I give them enough? And now I realize, yes, I did. You guys will be fine if you'll just learn to adjust to the change. Now, if you try to stop it, it's not going to be pretty. If you try to control it, it's not going to go well. Just accept it and work through it together because now the Lord is going to teach you that He has this well in hand. Listen, the Lord doesn't remove one leader that He doesn't already have another leader ready to take the place. So just listen and watch. There's going to be another group that's going to be the accepting group. They know that this is just church life. This is what happens. This is how God does things in a church. They're going to understand that this is a grieving time. And yeah, we'll have a grieving time. But that's also a joyful time. And realize the Lord has something in store. Now, all these different feelings are going on right now in the congregation. And we all just need to work together to work through them. Because when you're willing to work through them, it's amazing the things that you get to discover. Sunday morning, I was teaching my last Sunday school class I ever teach here at Horse Kid Baptist Church. And you know our lesson was about the, the Holy Spirit. So just to remind my class once again, I went over the six uh, ways that the Holy Spirit fills our life from Jesus. Jesus talked about how the Holy Spirit will be our helper or comforter. Some use that word. He'll be our teacher. He will be our convictor. Yeah, when you know you've done wrong, that's the Holy Spirit letting you know. He will also be our witness. That means He'll bear witness with our spirits that we are a child of God. He'll be our God. He'll also provide power to be witnesses. But as I was reading those passages to my class, there was one verse that really got my attention, knowing what I'm going through right now. It's in John chapter 16, verse 12 and following. Now this is Jesus talking to his 12 disciples. And Jesus says, I have much more to say to you more than you can bear right now. I read that and it, it kind of caught me because I feel the same way. <laughs> That's how I feel. I have a lot more to say. But it's not. it doesn't need to be said. And then he goes on to say, but when he, the Holy, when the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. That's what I know is going to happen at Horse Cave Baptist Church. I've been so blessed to hear your voice. I hope you've been blessed to hear mine. But the real voice we both need to hear is that from the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth, the Spirit of Jesus. Jesus goes on to say, He will not speak on His own. He will speak only what He hears, and He will tell you what is yet to come. He will bring glory to me by talking, taking from what is mine and making it known to you. All that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why I said the Spirit will make, will take from what is mine and make it known to you. This is what I know is going to happen here. The Holy Spirit has taken control. The Holy Spirit has always been in control. And now you're all of you are going to get a chance to see this, to hear this, and experience it. In fact, Jesus said, it's good that I'm leaving so that the Holy Spirit can come. I realized the same thing. It's good that I'm leaving. Because then what the Lord has planned next can come. If I stayed, 
I'd only get in the way of what God is doing. If I stayed, I'd get in the way of what you're learning. If I stayed beyond what the Lord had told me, I'm not doing what the man on the center cross or the middle cross said so. See, we're all a part of God's plan because all of us have been brought into relationship with Him. Let me conclude this by just giving you an idea about the call of God on all of our lives. The first call is the call to be His child. Salvation experience. It's about knowing that we're in His family. The second call that the Lord makes on our life is the call to be a witness. After we come to know the Lord as Savior, then He wants us to share that with those around us. Jesus called His disciples to learn from Him and then to go and share what they had learned. The third call on our life is the call to be His servant, to be His minister. Every child of God is a minister. Every child of God is involved in ministry. Here's where your experience, your spiritual giftedness, your passions, your talents, that's where they come into place. For me, it was teaching. The first job I did in church after accepting Christ, following in baptism and church membership, I began to teach middle school children at Kevill Baptist Church. The next thing I did was I taught the high school. Next thing I did, I accepted the fourth call that's on all of our lives, the call specifically to what God has you to do. And for me in particular, it was to be an under-shepherd. It was to be a, a preacher and to be a pastor. So God is calling each of you individually, and God is calling this church to follow Him. Listen, if you'll follow Jesus... Not what you think, not what someone else thinks, not all the confusion around. If you'll just follow Jesus, you're going to see amazing things. And it's going to be a joy to watch. Let's pray together. Father, I thank you for this time of wandering that you are sending your children into. Father, it's a time of discovery. It's a time of hearing from you, the Holy Spirit. It's a time where we have followed the call to follow Jesus. And Father, as we think of what our life is made of and what our life will be like, we live knowing that we do what we do because the man on the middle cross said so. Thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen.